Hi everyone, my name is Rhiannon from Blue Dog Board Games. Today I'm going to do a solo playthrough of the game Fields of Arl or Fields of Arla. I think it's Arl because there's no like apostrophe above the E, but who knows. So this is going to be part of an Uwe Rosenberg series. I'm going to be planning to do solo playthroughs of all of the um, big box Uwe Rosenberg games that I have in my collection. I'm still in the process of acquiring a few of them as well. At the end of that, I would like to do a bit of a ranking list. So to give you an idea of what games I think um, by Uwe Rosenberg are better from a solo perspective. I know um, some other channels have done very similar things. So I know Before You Play have done an Uwe Rosenberg series reasonably recently. Um, that is from a two player perspective though. So this one will be a slightly different twist of solo only. But anyway, we are starting with Fields of Arl today and um, we're all set up ready to go. So let's get going. So I'm just, first of all, trying to see what sort of similarities come out in um, the buildings. So I want to just try and see if I can get some uh, coherence going to my plan. Um, I find this game really, really tricky to sort of really get a good score in. I'm always very average, so please don't take this as any sort of strategy guide. This is just a demonstration of how the game works from a solo perspective. Um, there's no sort of double um, meeples that you're placing down, you're just placing your own, um, taking them back and then carrying on, so it's not like a feast for Odin. Um, so I can see that we have a smokehouse out. Some of these uh, tiles are randomly drawn, so some of them, like the mill for example, you can see it's going to be in every game, but some of them um, you do have some variants. So these ones up here um, vary from game to game, these ones here vary from game to game, and these blue ones on the left hand side vary game to game. So there is some variation in setup but not a huge amount. What I'm seeing though is a potential of pushing fish traps. I'm sorry the board is so big so um, you may not be able to see it but fish traps is very at the very top here. Um, if I push my fish traps all the way to a very high level per fish trap I can get one cutting of peat so that might be good. Um, and then here, this one's always out. If you can push your fish traps up better or even more. So that might be one that I could try and get. Um, and this one is fish traps plus two and per fish trap you get a wood. So I think maybe I'll focus on fish traps and see where that goes. So I'm trying to, I think I'm going to ignore that one just because it's got a cost of 25 food, which is gonna be really expensive. So I think I might have a look at this one here, which is fish traps plus two, and per fish trap you get a, a wood. In which case I need to be able to get nine food and two non-equal materials. The non-equal materials isn't a problem, but the nine food is. So I need to think about how I can start generating food reasonably quickly. Um, but a really good way of generating food is sending stuff off to markets, for which I need a vehicle. So maybe I'll think about trying to get a vehicle, but in order to get a vehicle, I can go here, but that's going to cost me two food. I can wait till winter and then pick up a vehicle and or a peat boat. And it doesn't have a cost of the food. Um, so what I think I might do is maybe um, concentrate on some animals and make sure I have enough horses and wood for my purchase of a vehicle in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna go here first of all. So this, the colonist, he's gonna give me a horse and my horse can go in the stool with my other horse and we're gonna flip one of our peat bogs, gonna drain it and that reveals four peat. And then I think I might just gain materials because I want to buy both a vehicle and a peat boat in a minute and that's expensive. <laughs> so let's go, I don't ever know whether I should go to the workbenches or not, I don't know whether it's worth it. Maybe, shall we? We're going to. We're going to go to the workbenches, the master per workbenches. So this is where you can upgrade the strength of all of your actions, but it does cost resources. So I think I might ignore this. I usually pay two clay and push this up, but then I don't usually go back to this. So I'm going to try and change it up a bit. So I am going to spend a wood to push up my axes. 
And then I think I might push another, I'm spending all this wood and yet this is what I want to keep. Spend the wood to get up there. And that's my two. Then I'm gonna go and get some more wood. So I get four wood because I've got four axes. One, two, three, four. You'll see that these tiles are all double-sided. So at the moment, I'm just getting the base wood, but you can send them off to market to be processed um, into like planks or processed wood. And they actually give you points at the end of the game. The peat's a little bit different. So this is just clay at the moment. Um, you can spend a peat to turn it into like a brick, but you need your carts to do that. And I don't have any carts right now. Uh, so last bit, I think I might, I wonder if I should just start pushing my fish traps up now. I'm going to do that. So this is what I mean. I get so distracted in this game. I have a bit of a plan, I'm like, I need food and this is gonna get me food anyway, but like, oh, I should like churn out all of my clay or, or um, the, the compost. Peat, sorry, I'll get the right word eventually. But then I just get distracted and do other things. Anyway, I get a sheep. My sheep can go in a field right now. Uh, fish traps plus one. Ugh. And then per, per fish trap I get food. So I've got three food. One, two, three. And that's the end of summer. Um, I'm not going to send anything to market because I don't have any vehicles. Um, but we are doing our end of summer a little bit, if you can see that properly. So every two sheep give us a food, but we only have one. And cows give us food, but we don't have any cows. And then we get um, a grain for our grain field here. We get a flax for our flax field. And if we have any forests, uh, they give us wood, but we don't have any. So we have to pay three food. One, two, three. So that was a waste. <laughs> and then um, two peat to fuel us through the coming winter. And that's the end of the first round. We now move into winter. And this is where we move. Uh, we play on the right hand side of the board. Um, we are solely restricted to the left-hand side of the board in the summer, in the solo game. In a multiplayer game, you can use one worker to go to the opposite season, do an action in the opposite season, but you do not have that option in a solo game. So we are now in winter. This is where um, the animals breed in our barns. So I want to be aware of that because I want to have at least one pair um, of animals in the stool, so at least I get a baby. But in the first instance, we're gonna go and get a vehicle. And what vehicle do I want? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six wood. And two horses. I could go for the really big one, but I think that might be a bit of a waste. I can't actually see what the cost is. That's seven would you they these are all double-sided as well so this is a smaller cart if you flip it there's a bigger cart and they cost different things or there are actions in the game that allow you to flip tiles so if i bought this cart here for the cheaper price and go to a space which later allows me to flip i can just flip it and um, without spending anything extra but i think i'm going to go for this one so let's go here spend five wood one two three four five and a horse I like to put my horse in the actual on the actual cart and he comes in my barn. There we go. And he's pulling my cart. <laughs> um, and I get a choice to buy a peat boat and I'm going to. So the peat boats cost one wood. That's a little um, cost at the side. And he goes in our small barn. The peat boat allows us to at any point during our turn to convert one peat into any other resource, which could be wool, grain, food, flax, or leather. So I really want to get more food. So one way that I can get more food is to get more peat because then I can convert it with my peat boat. But it might be a better idea actually to think about what I can trade in right now for food. Um, I could... Does anyone want leather? No. Uh, yeah, they want leather. Yes, I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm going to go to the tanner, convert leather. So I've got two leather, I'm gonna convert. It says per fleshing beam. I have three fleshing beams, but I've only got two leather. So I get two, or well, two skins. So I get two leather. I'm then going to deliver to Auric. So I'm going to 
pop my resource back and I'm going to trade that for four food and you get that immediately but this travel tile stays in your cart two three four then um, they come out at the end of the day so or the end of the season so I really want to get this building but for that I need two separate resources so I need wood and now I want to uh, you can go here to get wood but that's where I want to go in a minute to get the building so let's have a look somewhere else this could be good I think we might go there so let's go here one cutting uh, I'm gonna start with this one up here because it's at the end of the game if this tile is still there it's worth minus three points um, I get an animal now what do I want um, I think do I want to breed horses or sheep? Let's go for sheep. I'm going to breed sheep. So I'm going to get a second sheep. You can move your animals like, at any point. Um, and there are restrictions. So the stool can hold up to three. Um, each field can hold up to two of the same type. And each, um, I can't remember what these are called. What are they called? I'll find out. One minute. They're called dikes. Each dike can hold one animal as well. Uh, so I've got my animal and I get one wood and a clay. So now I can go here. Now this does cost me a food to go here. So what I'm going to do is, because I need to keep my nine food for the cost of the building. So I'm going to, I don't know whether this is sensible, pay a peak to get an extra food as per my peak boat. So I can now use this action and then I'm going to spend um, nine food and two non-equal materials, so a clay and a wood, to get the sluice yard in. Okay, so that means I get fish traps plus two, very nice, I'm on five fish traps. And per fish trap I get a wood, so I get five wood for that. One, two, three four, five. Very nice. And that's all my workers. So um, I'm going to, what do I want to do first? I think I might try and convert something here. This is where I really fall down in this game. I can't fall plan enough to understand what I actually want to do. I've got this like big overarching plan, but it's really difficult to actually implement. But this one looks nice. Per fish trap, you get one cutting. And now we're nearly at the top of fish trap. So if I can get that, that would be fabulous. However, I won't be able to convert both types of material this time. So maybe we'll do it next time. Or um, next, next season, not this coming summer. So let's focus on... Maybe we'll convert the peat now. Let's do that. I'm going to send that to market. There we go. So now in winter, this is where we breed our animals. So um, they only breed when they're in stalls or stables. They do not breed in fields. Don't know why. Um, but then, so I've got two sheep, so I get a baby sheep. And then um, one sheep gives me one wool, or four sheep give me two wool, six sheep give me three wool. So I've got three sheep, so I only get the one wool. And then I have to pay three food. Um, oh, sugar puffs. <laughs> Hang on then, <laughs> sugar puffs, because uh, I would not have done that. This is my problem, I'm gonna reverse that. I would not have done that. I would have converted the wood, which would have been free, and then that would allow me to spend my two, or that would have allowed me to pay that to get one food. So I would have to pay three food, so that's one food there, but when you don't have food, you can pay grain, so I can spend the other two with my grain. This is. This, this game is just really, really hard to plan out. But there'll be a lot of that, but as long as we know we're trying not to cheat as much as possible, <laughs> it's all good. So we're in summer, so let's bring everyone home. And um, this all comes out of our cart. So we've now got one converted or processed wood. And this little travel tile here starts to build up this track. So we can get up to 10 points at the end of the game if we have um, traded with all of these local towns and villages. But at the moment, we've just got one point. There we go. 
I really am eyeing up that smokehouse immediately. I wonder if I should try and get it. I could get it by going to the grocer and picking the processed clay. I mean, it is a waste. This is my problem again. Like, I get so tempted to like do these things, but it's gonna be really good for me too. So I don't know whether I should. <sighs> the thing is we're running out of room, so but that will allow me to get more room. <laughs> okay, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go here to get a horse and flip a new tile, which reveals four peat. We're draining our box. Then I am going to um, oh, I don't know. We're going here. I'm getting the processed brick, and then I gain a grain and a leather. Then I'm going to go to the builder, and I'm going to buy the smokehouse or build the smokehouse. So that means a wood and a brick to build the smokehouse. I'm going to need to relocate my horses. They need to stay on the dikes for a moment. And this is going to pop in here. So, oh see, this is where I go wrong again. Hold that thought. First of all, I was planning to go to the fish, fish traps fisherman to get a sheep. I am so rubbish at this game. <laughs> I'm really not that bad. I always get a, a reasonable score I'm like pushing at the very good score criteria but I just I'm all over the place in my thought process so I've got my sheep fish traps plus one and then per fish traps I get a food so let's give me six food we can now resume what we were doing so we bought the smokehouse per fish trap I can cut one peat so I've got six fish traps so I'm cutting six peat and I'm going to get rid of oh do I want to get rid of that no, let's give ourselves more room. So one, two, three, four, um, five, six. There we go. <laughs> and because we've now cut all the peat from this tile, this is now removed from the game. And now that's not worth any negative points anymore, which is fabulous. Um, that was good, I think. All over the place, but good. Now let's think about what we want to send to market, if anything. Probably do. So this is where you need to know what you want to do next season to know what you want to convert. I just don't know. What do I want to do? So now I'm looking at this. The buildings are where there's a lot of points, basically. Um, so I'm just trying to get lots of buildings. I also need to be a bit careful because I've only got two spare spaces now. I can't actually build here because this is sort of floodland still. Um, I would have to push my dikes back in order to uh, like make that my own drained land. My horses are okay because they're up on the, the hills. Right, so what do I want really? I think I need another vehicle, so I need more horses and I need more wood. Now that means I don't want to convert the wood because that's a waste. So maybe I should think about converting the leather I've got because then I can send that to market next time and that's going to give me a nice seven food. Maybe I should do that. I also need to think about animals. I need to start collecting more horses and I need more I need cows, because I haven't got any cows, and at the end of the game you are penalised, basically if you don't have a certain type of animal. It works out better if you have an equal amount of every single animal, um, so you need to sort of carefully balance that. So I don't think I want to do any of this. I don't want to get rid of my peat boat. I haven't got a plough. I could get rid of that, but that's a bit of a waste, I think. Um, so let's just do that. Let's convert some leather. 
So that just flips around to some clothing. And then sum up. So sum up, we have four sheep now, so they give us one food, and we still don't have any cows. We do get a grain, and we get a flax. And we still have no wood as well. And then we have to spend three food. One, two, three, and two peat. And then our goods come back to us. And we are now in the chilly winter. So what is my plan? Any ideas, anyone? What am I trying to do now? I really need cows and a new vehicle, which means I need more horses because I'm gonna be spending lots of horses. So what buildings am I going to be looking at really? I do think it would be really good because you can't really see this one super well, but the village church is worth 15 points at the end of the game. And if you buy that one, you get a cart or is it a Drows Drowski, I think. So I, I do ideally want to try and get that one earlier rather than later. Usually towards the end of the game, you can get that, which is, is obviously going to be much more beneficial the earlier in the game you can get it. But it does cost 15 food and three processed materials of each type, which is obviously a high cost. Um, but it could be worth trying to focus on that a little bit now, maybe. You know what, I think I'm going to do something a little bit controversial. <laughs> it's probably a really silly idea, but let's just give it a go. I'm still at the point where there's so many options in this game. Every time I play, I just want to try something different and see if it works or not. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to pay four wood and two horses to pull this big cart. Uh, now I've got no wood, but we'll see if that was good. So now we desperately need every animal. <laughs> so I think I'm going to try and get some animals somewhere. Well, it's much easier to get animals over here, but there you go. So let's try and go. I also want to start processing these two materials. So I'm going to be gaining more wool in a minute and I've got flax that I need to use. Maybe I should have a look at this as well. That's going to give me a cow, but then it's going to allow me to cut peat per cow I have. So maybe let's let's get some cows going. Let's get some cows going. Let's get some horses going. So uh, I'm going to go here, the cattle trader, to get two green. That does give me a sheep, but it then can give me a horse or a cow. And I think I'm going to go for a cow here. And then I don't know what that felt like a really weak action. But oh well. We're then going to try and start processing this, uh, whatever it is. What is it? Flax. So I've got two weaving looms. So I can convert two of my flax into cloth. And then I can use my wool over here in a bit. So what is my what is my plan now? I don't quite know. I think I need to get some wood and start converting some of this peat. I think. Which me which would be a really good idea to get more peat then. Which I'm going to do over here. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's winter time, so we're going to be breeding animals in a minute. Do I want to therefore try and get another cow? Let's get another cow. So we're going to do one cutting. So we get a peat there. This is now empty, so this removes, which is really good because this is minus three at the end of the game. Uh, we then get a wild animal, so we can choose what type of animal we have. I'm going to get a cow, and I'm going to move all of my sheep out and about the stall now because remember they only breed when they're in stall or a stable and my cows are gonna go back in there. 
Um, then I get a wood and a clay. Now, that's all my workers. So now I've got the headache of trying to work out what I want to send to market. So you see that these are like different shapes. So um, these are all split into little sections. So you can either put things in the little sections or you can cover um, like the whole space with bigger tiles. Whereas this one here has a white line down it. So I cannot put two smaller bits in here. It has to be a tile that's at least like two segments wide and that could go in there. So yeah, these ones are a little less versatile, but they're worth a lot more points at the end of the game. They also cost a lot more because um, I've had to, they're being pulled by two horses. So I really want to try and go trading here. I think what I might do is, I think I might use this here to trade two grain. I'm not really using my grain very much for four food. And that can go into this slot here. Um, I was planning to send this to market for seven food. I think I might do that now before I get distracted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven food. And then I think I might just convert. I've got lots of peat, so let's convert one of them. And then we're gonna breed, so I get a baby cow. And then um, all of our sheep give us wool. So I've got one, two, three, four, five sheep. So I get two wool and I'm still not using my wool. <laughs> and that's the end. So these bits come out and they join our little travel pathway. And we get a brick. And we're back in summertime. Sunshine, lollipops and rainbows, everything. So I need, I don't know what I need. Oh, hang on, I haven't paid for anything. So I also need to pay three food, one, two, three. There we go. Oh, didn't feed my darn people. So I really want to do this, which means I want to I don't know. <laughs> let's do it, let's do it now. Before I think about anything else, let's go and get a building. Nine food and two non-equal materials. So we're gonna go with the non-processed bits. So I've got, that's the wrong one. I've got the milk house in, so I get a cow. And per cow, I can cut one peat. So I've got four cows now, so I can just remove this tile and take all this peat, which is amazing. Very nice. So I really do want to try and focus on these bits now. We're going to get a fair bit of food coming in soon, or at least I've got so much clay that I can also trade in. Um, I think therefore I am. <laughs> what do I want? What do I want? I need a horse. I need a horse. I need food. I need materials. I need wood. I need clay. Let's get a horse. We're getting a horse. And we're flipping, we're, we're draining this last bog to reveal four peat. One, two, three, four. Let me scream if you want some more. Uh, I think we're now going to start pushing these dikes back because we need more room soon. Do we need more room? Hmm, don't know. That's probably like the least of our worries right now. Maybe I should start trying to process these, this wool. Okay, I need wood. <laughs> oh my God, I need everything. We're going here. So I've got two weaving looms so I can spend two wool to get two woolly cloths. And then I'm gonna go to the wood cutter and get four wood. See, I have absolutely zilch plan right now, but it's, it's flowing. It's flowing. 
So we actually have a nice lot of material here. So I'm going to focus, that's gonna be saved for this, maybe. So I want to convert two of these, so let's spin them. And um, unfortunately I can't convert all of those wood pieces right now. I might actually convert this into a coat with the idea that I can send it to Norden, I think. And then I may as well convert one wood, perhaps. We'll go with that, we'll go with that. So summertime, um, I've got one, two, three, four, five sheep now, so they give me two food. And I've now got four cows, so they're going to give me one food. Is that it? Apparently so. Um, I gain another grain. I gain another flax. These are from the fields, by the way, if I never said that before. So you get grain fields and you get flax fields. You can plough more of them if you buy ploughs. Um, but I, I've just not really done that this game. I don't have any forests. I have to pay three food. And then two peeps. Okay, winter time. And then uh, let's take all of this out. So I've now got my clay, which is very nice. You see, we're coming towards the end of the game, we're on round six of nine, and it's only like next round at the earliest that I'll be able to, it'll be the time after actually, but if I was lucky enough to manage to get a couple of fancy woods. No, I can only get one fancy wood. So yeah, I don't think I would be able to um, get it this round, so it won't be, it'll be round eight. <laughs> but still, it's better than nothing. So before I forget, I'm gonna pop you two in my cart. You can do this at any point in your turn. I'm gonna do it now before I forget and get distracted. I still need to get loads of food as well, so. Maybe I should um, concentrate on food. Because we're gonna be breeding in a minute. I think I, I might wanna try and get a horse so I can breed my horses. So I can get a horse here or here. The trouble is if I go here, I also get a sheep. And I've got quite a lot of sheep now, um, which means I'm gonna have to slaughter them. Or I could, I guess, send it to Norden for the market. Or I could actually send them here. But then that's a bit of a waste because ideally, not that I can go here yet anyway, I want the higher food values. I can't go here yet because you need the really big carts. This is too, there's too much goods to actually take them to Bremen. With that in mind then, do I want to flip one of my carts? and then work towards getting that. See, I'm distracted again. Let's, let's think about that. I'm flipping. So excuse me, I'm gonna actually flip. No, we're not flipping you, we're gonna flip you. Which means I'm going to send you to market. You're coming over here and I'm going to send you to market with the idea that next round I can just flat out get 30 food which means I'll be able to buy that. There we go. Um, before I forget I push a dike back. So we are now able to build in all of these spaces. We really have kept it very compact this game. So now what do I want to do? I need horses. I need horses. Where do I want my horses from? Oh, let's go to the cattle trader, I think. Or do I want materials? That's one cutting. Let's go here instead. One cutting, because then we can go here to just cut the rest of that peat in a minute. We've got three spades and that will mean that tile is then depleted. So one cutting, one animal, a horse, and one wood and one clay. And then we are going to 
yeah, I'm struggling, I don't quite know what I want to do. In which case, I think I might just go up here and just generate more materials. So I've got two weaving looms, so I can spend two flax to get two cloth. Don't know what I want to do with the cloth, but it's better in my pocket than not. And then, do I just want to collect wood? I think so. Let's just collect wood. So it costs me one food and I get four wood. Wood's always useful. Good, okay. Um, so we've done our like transporting to markets. So we are in winter, so we get breeding. So I'm going to move all my cows out. So cows can come over there. And my horses are going in to breed. Baby horse. Um, then my sheep give me wool. So I've got one, two, three, four, five sheep. And they give me two wool. And then I have to pay three food. So that's one, two, and then I can pay one grain and substitute for that. Good. So all of this comes out. Gosh, I've got lots of materials for, for a minute anyway. Summertime again. Okay, before I forget about anything else, we are going to go to Bremen. Or do we want to do that? Let me just check. I believe that is remove a a moor that's not been dehydrated yet. This is dehydrated, so I don't want to actually remove it. I want the clay from it, so let me just check. It says alternatively or additionally, so I don't want to. So we are going to go there now. So to get the 30 food, which is fantastic because we're on zero food at the moment, uh, we have to trade in a coat, a shirt and some leather goods. Very nice. And we get 30 food for that delivery, which is fabulous. Um, and we'll worry about the rest of that at a later time. So we are going to go and get a building. So that's three processed wood, three bricks, and 15 food. And I think I'm gonna go for this one because I want the extra space, maybe. I think so. We could always try and work towards a second one. So I'm gonna build the village church, which gets me an immediate cart. I think it's a Drowski, or I'm not sure if the upgraded one's a Drowski. There we go. That was That was pretty good, I think. Um, if we actually had an extra clay, because we could transfer all of these. Hmm, no, that's not going to work. Alright, so we do want to... Well, how are we doing for animals? We've got one, two, three, four, five sheep, four cows, three horses. What we might do, actually, is come here... Oh no, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. Ignore me. Let's actually think about who we wanna, we wanna try and push up this track now quickly. So this is processed good. Uh, we could trade in a cow, we don't wanna trade in a cow. We could trade in this. We're not really suffering for food at the moment, so maybe we should try and do that. But then buildings are worth so much money. Maybe I should really focus on buildings. That's per stable and per stool. It's worth five points at the end of the game. Honestly, I think I'm better off really pushing for one of these big pointers. This is 10 points. This is eight points, nine points, but I'm quite far away from these. Where am I? That could be good. I think ultimately the Lutitzburg Castle is gonna give us more points. 
at the end of the game. He's worth 15, but he's also going to give us a forest and he's going to push up on lots of tracks. Oh, decisions, decisions. I wish I was good at maths and then I could actually work it all out in my head. What's stopping me from trying to do both? Hmm. Okay. I'm going to flip. I'm going to try and work towards the second one of these. So I'm going to flip my cart because I really want to try and convert materials. So let's pop both of you in for two, costing two peep. And I want to convert all of you. I think I need to cut Pete. Just get that tile off my board. Perhaps. Is that a waste? It's only minus one point at the end of the game. But then this is worth food for me. Or any other goods. <laughs> I don't know. What do I want to do? Do I want to convert my wool? I've got loads of wool, which means I could go here. But then I'd need to use my process, my bricks. We're actually going to go here to get a sheep. The reason why I want a sheep, press shovel pair. Hold on, let's move you guys back. The reason I want a sheep is because I can then send him to Norden to the market for four. And that fits very nicely in this slot here. I think so. That's what we're going to do. So, um, summertime. Oh, we've got one. We've got one more guy. I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> um, I think therefore I may cut Pete. Let's cut Pete. Let's get that out of the way. It's worrying me. We're removing that tile. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. Summertime. So I've got one, two, three, four, five sheep. They're gonna give me two food. And then cows, I've got four cows. So again, they're gonna give me two food. I get another grain and flax, no wood, but I have to pay three food. One, two, three, and two peat. And then all of this comes out. So that has pushed me up a nice way. We're on six points now, seven points. There we go. Very nice. So this is our last winter. So let's take account of where we are in terms of our animals. So we've got three horses, five sheep, four cows. So we need to worry about our horses. So I can get another horse over here, but that is a waste. So I'd probably be better off going to the grocer next season. I really don't want to go here. I don't want any more sheep. My poor sheep. I've got nothing to do with them unless I slaughter them to get more food, but I don't think I want to do that. It's just a waste. So I think we're trying to get to keep our animals at five. So let's breed my horses. Let's try and get a cow, in which case I'm gonna have to do something with these darn sheep, aren't I? What can I do with this sheep? I can't get rid of them. <laughs> okay, what I'm gonna do is a wasted action, but fine, one cutting, but we don't have anything to cut. We're gonna get an extra animal. So we're gonna get a horse. And then we're gonna get a wood and a clay. I really want a fancy clay. Where can I get a fancy clay? Here. I'm gonna go here. This is such a wasted waste of time, I think. It's not really a waste of time, but it's just, I don't need this leather now. We're gonna get a clay and we're gonna get a brick, which means we can go to this, place here to spend a food. I'm going to get a building. So I'm going to spend my three wood, three bricks, 15 food. Now what do I want? This one 
will allow me to get a forest, which will give me two points at the end of the game. It will push me up in the spades. Um, so I still won't be gaining points at the end of the game. According to how far you like, push yourself along some of these tracks, or all of these tracks actually, you do get points at the end of the game, bar this one actually. Pottery wheels, I still wouldn't get points. Workbenches, I would start to get points. So mate, that would be reasonably good. This one, however, ovens, which would get me points, and weaving looms, which would get me a point. And then I can flip a tile. Is there anything that I would actually want to flip right now? Maybe, actually. Well, actually, I don't think I want to flip it right now. We're going to go for the castle. Which means I get a forest. And I push up in spades. In pottery wheels. And work benches. Good. Okay. Um... Anyway, I do have two clay that I could use to get a stall. Then I could breed my horses and my cows at the same time. Oh, sorry, that's, um, yeah, no, that's converting a stall to a stable. I could get a stall. Do I want a stall? Then I would have five, five horses, five sheep, five cows. That seems like a really good deal, doesn't it? I'm going to go there. So two clay. To get a stool and my cows are going to reside in there this horse can go out to the field don't know why i've banished these poor sheep to the um the hills they can come down there there we go so what do we want to send to market we need now we're going to get rid of some of these little tiles i think oh i don't know i don't know whether i should Let's save that for next time so we can convert one of you with the intention of sending you off to market next time. We can get rid of a peat for two, two food. Um, I'm going to now get rid of a field for, oh, I don't know why I'm paying peat. Get rid of a field for one food. I'm gonna get rid of the flax because I've not really been focusing on the flax. Did I already take my food? I don't think I did. Now, that leaves me with a plough. Um, I plan to flip that next turn. That's one thing I've managed to sort of half think about, but watch me, I'll forget it. <laughs> uh, I think, therefore, I may try and flip you. Let's flip you and let's get you to. Do I want three fancy woods? No. No, that's good. So winter, we're going to breed every animal in our stall. So that means we get an extra horse and an extra cow. So we're now on an equal number of all animals, which is really good. That's going to be the optimum for the end of the game. Um, and then we've got five sheep, so they give us two wool. And then we have to pay three food for sustenance. One, two, three. And then we are in the final round of the game. Last summer. Oh, last summer. I can see it all. So everything comes back. We've got two shirts. Um, we've got a coat. And we've got two little travel tiles. I love in Uwe Rosenberg's games there's always some like secret artwork somewhere so it may be across the player boards you may have very similar like identical player boards but there's just one thing that's just slightly different about one of them and I haven't actually compared the second player's um, tiles to this one but this one's got a shadow of a dragon that's flying over a road and I only noticed it um, the other day and it just tickled me so the aesthetics of these games are just lovely. And then two processed wood. So we, before we forget anything else, we're going to go to the warden space and flip. So we, oh, do we want to flip this darn 
boat right now? No, we're gonna do that last. We're not doing that right now. Hmm. Well, we also ideally wanted to flip. Maybe we don't wanna flip that. <laughs> because on the back, let's move these guys out now. On the back of one of these stools, you can, you've got a depot which allows you to double the point values of any resources you've got in your track at the end of the game. However, I haven't actually generated that much food. I've spent it all, so maybe I won't worry about that too much. Let's have a look at what buildings we can buy as a last minute push. We have actually got this, so I was going to send a shirt to Leah for six food. I'll stick you in there. Uh, six feet. There we go. So what have we got? We have got that's out of our reach. We have got nine food and two unequal things. So we could get the golf house in, which is five points at the end of the game, which is really good. It'll also allow us to get extra processed wood, which isn't necessarily going to be that useful. I could actually then go to the joinery. Oh, let's do this. So first of all, we're going to go here to spend two non-equal materials. So I've got processed wood and non-processed wood and nine food to get this golf house in. We're going to run out of room in a minute. So my cows, oh, my cows can go back in there. So per stable, we don't have any stables, but per stool, we get a processed wood. So we get two and then um, I'm going to spend two peat to get two grain and then I'm going to go here to the carpenter to get a building so I'm going to spend my five grain and two processed woods to get the joinery oh excuse me horses and that's gonna go in here. And my horses are gonna be moved up to there. So per plow, I get a horse. I don't have any plows, but I don't want a horse either. And then per peat boat, I have one, you get two peat. Don't know whether that was really worth it, but I do get six points for that tile at the end of the game. So that's quite nice. I think we have now exhausted our options of um, uh, buildings. It's now just a case of trying to maximise points where possible. So I'm just eyeing up this one last like trading position, the the Dorn at Dornham. What I could do is I could go to the dike builder, get a cow, and then push back two dikes, which will give me one point at the end of the game. I can then go to the farmer to get a plow with my cow that I just gained and then plow a field. And then that will allow me to trade in that plow for eight food. I don't know whether that's worth it really. Um, the alternative is I flip a tile. The thing is I've just not got many resources that are too, I've actually been reasonably efficient with my resources this time. What else can I do though? I could get, go here. Or actually I could go and get some clay, go here, spend two clay to push me up there, which is worth three points. I think I might actually do that. I think that's gonna be the biggest point bonus. Cause that's only gonna give me, I've only got two weaving looms. So that's only gonna give me two points. Okay, so I'm going to the clay worker to get four clay. And then I'm going to the master action. So I'm going to spend two clay to push up to the top. That gives me four points at the end of the game. So now I have three extra actions that I can do. So anything that's going to give me a point with one clay. Yes, the pottery wheels. So I'm going to spend a clay to push my pottery wheels up. So that's two. I can spend a 
wood to push my spades up and one last one I've got a processed wood the processed materials can substitute for the basics but it's just a bit of a waste sometimes it's a bit of a waste uh, I want to use this clay what can I use this clay for that's going to give me a point at the end of the game let's do that slaughtering tables there we go and that's it so um, we're going to send stuff off to market so we did not get that one but that's okay um, let's send you off and you guys don't need to go uh, I can spend or oh, I need two p for fuel in a minute I can spend one oh, it makes absolutely no difference I'm just going to get an extra ball and that's all I can do that's all I can do so last summer uh, we've got five sheep so they're going to give me two food and I have got five cows so they're going to give me three food one two three or in which case I would have not used that one p oh it doesn't matter I have to spend it anyway ignore me um we get a grain we do not get flax anymore but we do get a wood and then uh, we spend three food, one, two, three, and two peat. And that is the end of the game. So that is Fields of Arl. We're gonna go and proceed into final scoring and I will be back in a moment. So I have got a calculator just because my mental maths on camera is not wonderful. So um, first of all, we do clothing tiles and building materials. Um, I've just taken the bits out of my carts ready for scoring. So um, I've got four for clothes, uh, four for shirts, and then two and a half for coats. I have no idea why there are half points in this game. It's really annoying. <laughs> why did they not just make that like a three point item and that's a two point? And then I've got another 0.5. <laughs> 0.5 of a point for my processed wood. Then equipment in the barn. So I've only got a peat boat for my small vehicles. And then I've got three different vehicles here. So that's 10 points, 11, 12. Travel experience. So this is the track at the side here. I did not manage to get the last one here. So I've only got nine points instead of the 10. Um, then tools. So this is where you get your points at the end of your tracks. So I've got three, there, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Then we have a look at our goods track. So this is where you can see um, points at the very side of the track. Um, if you have your depot, which is your upgraded stool or your flipped stool tile, that's where you can double those point values. But I didn't manage to get that this game. So I've only got one point for this, for the wall. Uh, victory points on the home board. So this is where the big points come in. So this is where you look at all of the centre bits. You ignore the travel and you ignore your goods. You add up all of your buildings and then you minus anything as well. So if I didn't have... Um, if I didn't finish dehydrating my moors, they're worth minus four points. Any of these bits are worth minus one point. And because I haven't pushed my dikes back all the way to the very bottom, I minus three here. So um, we're going to add five, 15, so that's uh, 35 there, two, seven, eight, nine, two, eight, four, nine, and then minus three. Oh, minus three. And then we have the animals on the home board. So not these guys, these are only here for show. They're not really meant to be there. I just like, like them there. So each animal type you have the least of is worth two points. Each animal type you have the second least of is worth one point and animals of the third type are not worth any victory points. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 points for the animals because um, then the cows are not worth anything and it's the same whatever way round you count them. And finally, you then have a look at any bottlenecks in the game. So for example, if I wasn't able to pay like food 
and then I also wasn't able to pay the grain and any animals for um, like one of my sustenance phases. I would then have to like uh, take points off me, but you never really get to that point unless you're like really a bit careless of your actions or, or you're willing to take the hit and I'm never really willing to take the hit. So I don't have anything there. So that gives us 114. Oh, that, that's really good. That's actually nearly my best score. I think my best score was 115.5. Um, and it says here in the solo game variant, we consider 110 victory points to be a re remarkable score. I wouldn't say I, I played remarkably here, but I definitely didn't do too bad. So 114 points, pretty darn good, really. Um, that is Fields of Arl by Uwe Rosenberg. I hope you've enjoyed this playthrough and I will be back momentarily uh, with my overall thoughts on the solo variant of the game. So just sharing a couple of thoughts about Fields of Arl. This is a game where I feel completely torn uh, about how I feel about this game. So I played this game initially a few years ago now. And I had a board game subscription service. So I then this this was one of the games that I selected for one of my months. So I played it probably eight to ten times whilst I had it there. And I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. Um, it was one of my first Uwe Rosenberg games. I think by that time I had played Feast for Odin, but I'd never played Agricola um, or any of his other titles, apart from his smaller box ones, Patchwork and things like that. Um, but this was another one that I knew from a solo and a lower player count perspective was um, highly recommended, so I was very interested. And again, farming theme, obviously he does farming themes very well and very regularly, so this was of interest. And I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I then decided I wanted to pick myself up a copy, so I found one not very long ago, um, bought it second hand, and it didn't hit me in quite the same way. I and I, I will go into why, but and I still don't know where I sit with it. This this time round that I played it on this playthrough, I've enjoyed it a lot more than I have done the last. I think I've played it now four times over the past week or so. I've enjoyed it much more now than I have done over those past few plays. So I have much more trouble with this game than any other game that I can think of in my collection about fall planning and strategizing. I get so distracted and I get so overwhelmed with the amount of things that I'm trying to remember and plan to do that I just don't sort of form anything for the long run and I just go with the flow. That may appeal to some people because they really like strategizing and they really exercise their brain really well in that regard but I'm just not that sort of person that can do that. I can't imagine these things, I can't remember these things and I can't visualize how it's all going to plan out. So I really struggle, especially as in this game that you've got, you're so restricted because you have the summer actions on the left and the winter actions on the right and as you saw in this playthrough I really struggled at some point because oh, I should have been thinking about, I wanted to take this action, so I need these resources, but now I can't get these resources because I'm in the opposite season. So that means I need to wait for the next round in the summer to then get those resources. But then by that time, I've forgotten what I even want those resources for. So that is something that I really struggle with is in this game. Um, I find it very difficult to plan and that may or may not be something that other people find. It was interesting when I played this game initially, back when I had my subscription service, because my husband played it with me as well, and he actually said something reasonably similar. He's played a few Revo Rosenberg games with me, and he said that this one felt very disjointed in terms of, um, like, at the bottom of the board, you may be gaining some, some wood, for example, but then where you're spending that wood is sort of dotted all over the place. So yes, it may be used for your buildings, which is also down the bottom, but then you may be using that wood up here for this action. Um, you may be getting your animals over the top left, but then you may be sending them to market down the bottom left, and you're sending them to market over on this board instead. And he said that he found it very difficult, I think, to sort of piece together a plan and try and mark out exactly where you're trying to go, what you're trying to do, and visualize it in your head. And this time around getting this game out, I see what he means. It, I wouldn't say it necessarily feels disjointed. It just doesn't feel quite as smooth 
as some of his other games. For example, A Feast for Odin, some of their actions, there's so many action spaces, there's much more action spaces than there are in Fields of Arl, but because they're grouped in terms of similarity, and so you'll know you're getting your goods at this small section here, and your hunting spaces are a little bit further up, you know where you are, and you know where to look, and you know, it, maybe it maps out better in your brain when you're trying to sort of think and um, think about your moves. I just find those games a lot easier to play and this one I do find a challenge. Now I'm not necessarily saying that that's a bad thing. Like I said, I've enjoyed this game very much actually um, just doing this playthrough and I think maybe I should just talk, take it with a bit more of a pinch of salt rather than a big heavy Euro game where I really want to try and push for my high score. I think this one just would benefit a bit more of a relaxed approach from me. So I, I uh, consider this one a bit more of a chill game and just a, a lovely little uh, farming game where I collect my animals and build things in my barn and build buildings and not worry too much about the final score. Otherwise I think I can suffer from analysis paralysis quite a lot in this game and just don't know what to do and I don't know how to remember what I'm doing. I feel like I need a notepad half the time to record what what is my plan. In terms of replayability this is another funny one for me because for example, the, the, I said at the beginning of the game, there are tiles that you can sort of shuffle in. So um, the blue tiles at the, the left-hand side of the board, I don't know why I'm pointing because you can't see them now, but uh, the blue tiles, there are six of them that can come out and there's only three that come out each game. So there is a bit of variability there. The green tiles that come out, which did, we didn't build in this game, but they, they have some starter tiles, which may be used in your first few games to help you along a bit. Um, but they can be shuffled in as well and the yellow ones uh, there's only four or six of those um, so in terms of that that's the only variability that you're going to get in this game therefore some people may feel that this suffers in terms of replayability i do agree to some extent however because my brain is just not mapping out this game as easily as some of his other titles I think that I could get quite a lot of enjoyment out of this game for a long period of time because each game of mine, I just don't know what I'm doing, so it's a bit of a surprise every time I make, I do an action and then see the outcome from it. I do sort of feel like I do carve out the same or similar pathways each time because there's not a lot of variation in the buildings. Um, you do sort of just twig a couple of the like bonuses that you can get, so for example mine um, pushed up my fish traps uh, track a little bit more and then another tile allowed me to like cut peat from the amount of fish traps so just looking at those similarities or bonuses that you can get by building both of those buildings together uh, may allow you to get some really nice combos going but that does mean that the next game I will probably remember that that was quite rewarding and just do it again there's not really any incentive in this game to try different categories. For example, I don't think I have ever actually used the Baker, which um, is one that allows you to trade in uh, grain and peat for food. I don't think I've ever used it. I don't think I've ever used the, um, what's the other one, Potter either. So per pottery wheel, you can trade a clay for food and um, peat. I don't think I've ever used them. I may have once or twice just for like a bit of a quick extra boost of food, but I've never found a strategy to really focus in on that, on those actions, which is a shame because I do feel like I'm not really exploring the game to its fullest potential. But ultimately, that's my fault. Maybe I should just stop trying to do this, play the same game every time and just be brave and adventure into something else in my game. I just find that some other games are much better at encouraging you to do so, and this one doesn't necessarily do that. The production of this game is, of course, absolutely lovely. It's the same as other Uwe Rosenberg games in that the, the tiles are nice and thick. You've got lovely anime pools. The artwork is very pretty, and as I said um, in the actual playthrough, the artwork on the tiles is just like, slightly different according to like which piece you pick up and there's just little quirks and it's a bit like a where's Wally type of thing you're just sort of like analyzing it really carefully just to see where the little like easter eggs are it's very very cute so yeah um in terms of like visual representation and component quality it's really nice it's really lovely as usual so from a solo perspective overall i do like this game very much um this is only a solo and two player game so that is just something to bear in mind 
So um, this one appealed to me specifically for that reason. At lower player counts, it plays better. I do think it would benefit from a slightly different solo mode where um, perhaps like using the Feast for Odin system where there's um, player pieces that are blocking certain spaces. That would encourage you perhaps to like branch out into certain areas a little bit more because that place is blocked. I don't know how well that would work necessarily, but it works in a two-player game. So you would just have to maybe um, re-implement the, the rule as in the multiplayer game where you could um, venture what, with one of your meeples into the opposite season. I believe there is a variant on Board Game Geek that does sort of implement that sort of thing. So I am very interested in checking that one out. Additionally, I do sort of feel this game would benefit from sort of a few scenarios or a bit like a little campaign as in Hadrian's War that's been made by the designers. I feel like if you had goals to say, breed at least seven of each type of animal or uh, build um, all of the red buildings or uh, fill up your barn with the biggest vehicles possible, I feel like that would give you something to strive for and allow you to really sort of start to think about focusing in on your plan rather than getting distracted and worrying too much about, um, I don't know, like balancing the, the the types of animal meeples a little bit more or building loads of buildings because that's where your points are at the end of the game. I feel like it would benefit from that just because that would just broaden your horizons in terms of replayability. But I don't really know whether that would work ultimately. <laughs> but an interesting idea. So I am very torn about this one. I do enjoy it from a solo perspective and I would recommend it. However, it's not one that I would necessarily want to play back to back many, many times. And um, I will be interested to see uh, a bit later day, uh, later down the line of the, the Vote Rosenberg series that I'm doing, whether my thoughts on it change a little bit. Because what I think I might do with this one, um, especially just as I am a bit confused as to where I sit on it is, play some of the others, um, do playthroughs of them like this video and then I might come back to this one and just sort of refresh myself and say how do I think this compares, you know, just don't don't quite know. But um, overall I do very much like it. I don't know if it's going to be one that stays in my collection forever but I'm happy it's in my collection for now and I, I just want to play it more to get a more thorough understanding and um, hopefully push up into even higher scores or even like explore parts of the game that I just haven't explored into before. So that is it from me today. Thank you very much for watching my playthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to my channel because then you'll be let know of any new releases that I do. Otherwise, have a lovely rest of your day and thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.